we're in Montana here, kind of south central Montana. And I'm currently standing on some waste dumps from a mine. The primary opening of which was right behind the trailer there, on the far side, but right behind it you'll see a, a hole where they tried to fill it in and it's continuing to slough down because of rain, etc. We're sitting here and there's thousands of tons of uh, waste. We don't know what the grade is. We don't know much about it except they didn't dig a hole 400 feet deep just for the exercise. So my job is to come out here and survey and sample this so we got a good idea of what's actually here. Now, I'm doing this with simple tools. Now, I've got a big fancy theodolite and everything at home and, and I could have brought it and stuff, but it's big, it's heavy. It's got issues in terms of batteries, etc. So it's simpler just to do with simple tools. We should be able to easily get within about 10% plus or minus of the volume here. And you can too with simple hand tools. Now basically we got a stack of buckets here, a tape measure. I'm using a pen, but a pencil would be better. Simple protractor piece of graph paper. Now, why don't you get on the other side, little one. You'll see there's this line right here. That aligns everything properly. Now, we've got this set up north-south, but that's not critical. You just have to be able to maintain orientation. So, once you've done that, then you take a tape measure and a can of spray paint and you decide where you want to survey to and you measure distances. Now this is a 20 foot hash mark from the buckets. Here's another 20 foot hash mark. And here's another 20 foot hash mark. So basically this is 60 feet away. And looking back that way, going that way, orient your body, your shoulders to that line. Look straight ahead. And that's a pretty close to 90 degree angle. Looking at the distance, we're pretty darn close to right in the middle. So that's within a couple feet of 50 feet from that pile of buckets. So, go back here to the pile of buckets. Now I've actually, you know, kind of measured this off first so I had an idea how big it was so I could fit it on the paper. Now little one, if you can back up that direction. So, we know that's 20, 40, 50 feet over. The scale I did was half inch equals 20 feet. This is my reference point. This is the pile of buckets right here. So I put my pen on the pile of buckets. Put the zero there. Sight along the, this line of the protractor onto that paint can. That gives me the line. Now, 20. Uh, make sure I'm in the middle there. That wasn't. Redo it. Uh, 20, 40, 50. Put a point on the ground. And that's basically that point. The side of the dump comes roughly there. Now, I will just do that for a number of points around the dump and draw these lines in like I've already done on that dump right there. That's this. That is two scale and it's a fairly accurate representation within five to ten percent. Now the one thing that's left is to determine the volume and for that you can take a protractor, put a string through the little hole, hang a weight from it, look down the side of the dump along the edge of the protractor 
and then have somebody measure it or you can just clamp it with your finger and then read off the angular distance. I mean, well, the angular measurement. I've got something that works a little bit simpler than that in that this level here will keep this level to the ground while I move this and then I can just read the measurement off. This used to be my father's. And uh, so that gives you the angle of the slope. And now you've got a question, well, how high is it? Well, that's also fairly easy. In, at Home Depot for about 20 bucks, you can buy something called a sight level. And basically, it allows you to look through it and see horizontally. Now, in this case, I'm using a clinometer as opposed to just a sight level. But I've got it set at zero, so it is a sight level. Now, I am six foot tall. My eyes are about five and a half feet above the ground. So I take the instrument, the sight level across there, pick out a rock or whatever. This is five and a half feet above that. Add another 18 inches, seven feet to the top of the dump from that spot. Now, I'm going to go all the way around the dump measuring the depth and the slope so that we can calculate the volume with a fair degree of precision, even though all I'm doing is using very, very you know, simple instruments. So, that's what I'm going to do. And when I'm done, I'll show you what the, the final diagram looks like and what the volume calculates out as. Now, this is kind of useful. Sometime in the past, somebody has taken a loader and dug into the side of the hill and then piled it up again. Now, it's my interpretation that that was for sampling purposes. Because when you do that, you kind of blend it all up a bit. So, you take a look. You can see here they dug out that, and made that pile. They dug out by the buckets and made that pile. They dug out over here and made that pile, etc. So I'm gonna go around the dump and sample these piles and pan them out and also split. I'm gonna crush and split uh, for assay too. And then we'll see what uh, the panning does. This, uh, this material here, also in these dumps, there's like three different dumps. That's the way I look at it. This dump here has all this stuff that seems to be decomposing and efflorescing and just turning into clay almost. That one over there is more iron oxides. And that one seems to be more of the efflorescing or whatever at the bottom, but they covered it with gray on top. Also, this dump here has gray on the side. You can see the layering as they were dumping it. My interpretation is there was a rail line initially starting there, dumping both sides. Then they just started dumping on this side, kept working, and that was the last stuff they did, judging by the layering right there. This material is obviously decomposing. Look at the rainwater there. And when you come over here, this material is almost all sulfides. Look at that. That's yeah, just almost solid sulfides there. So I'm thinking they were kind of segregating it as they mined it. And when I'm standing on maybe the sulfide dump, and that may be the oxide ore or low-grade ore dump, 
That may be the way stump. I don't know. That's what I'm here to find out. So, let me get my pick and shovel and some buckets and have at it. So as the sun sinks slowly in the west, here's our results of the day. We have 13 samples collected, crushed, and split, and panned. Not much in the way of free milling gold, as a matter of fact, very little in the way of free milling gold, but quite a bit of arsenal pyrite. So we'll have to have some assays run to see how rich it is. If it's rich enough, we could make an arsenal pyrite concentrate and sell that. We also have a sketch map. I will clean this up, of course, when it's all done. But there was 13 piles which were sampled. Got three different dumps, basically. And the north dump is 3,000 tons, the long skinny one. The big round one is 3,500 tons. And the uh, small one right here is 1,400 tons. Now, as a general rule, that slope right there is about a 2 to 1 slope. So if it's 10 feet high, it comes out 20 feet. And if you have a slope on the other side, it also goes out 20 feet. If you were to cut it vertically, flip it up, and put it on right here, then... That might have been a little bit confusing, so I made a diagram to make it simpler. First of all, while this looks shallower than what we saw in the field, that is actually the normal angle of repose, about a two to one slope. If it's just rough guesses, it, you know, you take a bunch of loose particles and throw them down, and they will form about a two to one slope, pretty darn close. So we have a two to one slope on each side. And this is basically a cross-section of one of the dumps there. 20 feet across the top and 10 foot height. Now, to make life simple for the calculations, instead of calculating two triangles and doing all this other stuff, there's a simple little manipulation you can do. You take this triangle over here and simulate it, just flip it over there and fill this in to create this. So basically, you take the width of the original flat surface plus two times the height of that surface, I'm mean going to have this right here, okay, you add those together and then multiply it by the height and that will give you your volume pretty darn close. Width plus 2H times height will give you your cross-sectional volume your cross-sectional area and then multiply by the length and you got the volume. I hope that makes it a bit clearer. So basically whatever the depth is you can go to one side two times the height and assume 
vertical walls and you will uh, get a pretty close approximation of what the actual volume is. It's rough, you know, but plus or minus 10% is just fine at this stage of the game. So, this dump is done for the day. We have all the data and samples we need. Tomorrow, we head over there and uh, sample a small prospect. And then we head up just about underneath the sun there in those hills to sample an even smaller one. Bring those samples back here, split them, crush them, and then boogle back to base camp, offload samples, resupply, and come back the day after. We also uh, drug the back of the trailer here on a rock, so uh, there's going to be a few little uh, repairs and modifications there that I'll have to do. So happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.